hi, um, I'm going to do another revision -y thing on biology AF. Oh, yeah. I've actually already done this one, but um, so I'm not at the door halfway through and I lost it by accident, so none of the best of you forgot to do it again. That's okay. Can you help me revise? So I'm going to do it on xylophone because we missed one of the lessons. Well, it feels like we missed all of the lessons, honestly. I don't really feel like I let anything with, on plants. We did like one lesson. So, um,. This is transporting plants I'm doing. So, um, I've got quite a good analogy to remember, like xylem and phloem and like what they do. So, the transport system in plants moves water in a special tissue called vascular tissues. And water and soluble materials travel upwards in xylem tissues. And phloem tissues let sugars travel up or down. And if you can't ever remember like which way they go, um, think of like a small child. If you give them water, they'll just be like not hyper at all. So if you give them tissue water, it will just go up. It won't do anything else. Um, but if you give a small child sugar, they'll be like whoa whoa running forwards backwards forwards backwards. So you think of that. So in a phloem tissue, if you give a phloem tissue sugar, they'll be like whoa whoa and transporting upwards and downwards and upwards and downwards, it's upwards and downwards. So phloem tissues up down up down sugar sugar sugar. Lime to choose water. Mm. That's how I remember it. Um, obviously, uh, that's not actually really. They're not like small children. That's just a way to remember it. Um, I'll tell you what, how, like, why they do that later. Um, I'm not very good at describing how they're arranged and then flowing roots and things. So I'll just say in a root, um, xylem is in an X shape in the middle, like this. So just remember that it's xylem X in root, um, and the phloem is like, so if this is a xylem, I can't really do it. Okay, I've got nothing I can use either. So if this is xylem, the phloem will be here, 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 here. So it's like X, the little dots around it. Um, and that helps like to withstand the pulling forces roots are exposed to, because it's like quite strong, steady. And then in the stem, xylem and phloem are arranged differently. Um, Phloem is like, let me just check I've got this right, so it's good. You, you can uh, you can only really see it in the textbook. So um, there are loads of vascular bundles in the roots, and the vascular bundles contain phloem, xylem, as I remember I said before. So, and these are like, I can try and show you a photo. I can't really explain it. These are what the vascular bundles look like, and these are all the way around um, in the stem. So that big, huge bit at the top, it's like phloem. Um, and then at the bottom is xylem. And in the middle is cambium. And cambium is um contains Mary stem tissues. Uh, yeah, Mary stem cells, not tissues. Because all that Mary stem cells. What are Mary stem cells? Mary stem cells are stem, think of stem cells. Um yeah, I know that in the stem it's got nothing to do with the stem. It just means that's where you know what stem cells are, what can differentiate. Specialized cells can differentiate in the number of specialized cells. Blah, blah, blah. So carry can carry how do I say it? Cambium is the layer of Mary stem cells and they can turn into xylem or flow, which is right there in the middle. Yep, so that's how they're arranged and what they do. So the structure of the violet, xylem, not xylem, xylem. Um, xylem is used to transport water minerals from the roots up to the leaves um, and the parts of the plant because obviously the roots are the only place to get water. Um, and the roots must be really annoyed because the leaves are just like, let's see water out, let's see water out, the water are open, wee! So the roots are like, oh, got to get more water up there from this island. So the water goes up to the plant. Um, I can't say this word, so in plants that like aren't xerophytes, I guess that's what it means. If I'm wrong, I'm really sorry, but it's like in Dictotylodonis plants. If I find out what that means, I'll put it in the um uh, what's called discretion box. Um, anyway, just think of the most obvious feature of xylem, of xylem are the xylem vessels, xylem vessel elements. And these are really long cells and they've got like thick walls that have been, it says impregnated, but I've never used that word before because it's not like it's pregnant. That have been like put, had this thing called lignin put in. Um, and then as the xylem develops, the lignin waterproofs the walls of the cells. So this lignin that's been put in goes waterproof waterproof and as a result of this like the cells and the end walls of the contents like decay and all die so because it's been waterproof so no water or anything go in and this leaves like a really long column of dead cells um 
with no contents so it's literally like a tube with no end walls and this is a xylem vessel which is really helpful because walls can just go straight up that's a really good feature of it so and also the lignin is like strengthening the vessel walls and like prevents it from collapse um yeah that's what lignin does and this keeps the vessel open even when there's like water's in short supply so they never collapse that's that's a good feature of them um the lignin also forms patterns in the cell walls and these could be spiral annular like rings or a network of broken rings um reticulate and this prevents the vessel from like being too rigid because there are all these different things it allows flexibility of like the stem or the branch um but in some places the lignification is not complete um it leaves um pores in the walls of the vessel and these are called pits or bordered pits so in so lignification is not complete leaving pits or bordered pits in um the walls of the vessels but this is on purpose they don't the lignification isn't just complete because they got tired it's on purpose so this allows water to leave one vessel um and like pass into another adjacent vessel or um, like pass into the living part of the plant they're there on purpose um so as i've already been seen through some of the adaptations um of xylem to its function like remember the long tubes with like no end walls so water just goes continuous column um, tubes are narrow so the water columns does not break easily and the capillary action is like really effective. Um, pits in the lignified walls allowed movement like of water from sideways from one vessel to another or to the living parts of the plant. Um, flow of water is not impeded, so there are no end walls, there's like no nucleus cytoplasm to slow it down, no cells content, lignin thickening, preventing the walls from collapse. Lots of good things like that. So that's xylem, so you should know that now hopefully just rewind the video and go over it again um flowing is harder i don't like flowing as much well i don't like either of them if i'm honest but. um oh message um, okay flowing is a structure of flowing do you remember what is sugars sugars give sugar to a child to go mental they run up and down up and down up and down so they need to transport sugars from one part of the plant to another this could be up or down the stem and um, phloem tissue consists of two types of cells, the sieve tube elements and the companion cells. So the cell is the sieve tube elements, so they're like, hey, I want just cool sieve tube elements going on. And the companion cells are like, oh, I need a friend, I need a companion. So you see the sieve tube elements and they're like, oh, yes, go get in, friend. So they're always together. Um, and the sieve tube elements aren't actual cells, they like, have no cytoplasm and no nuclear CTC. They're lined up end to end to form um, a tube and in which the plant transports sugars sugars yay up and down up and down get that into your brain up and down and that is usually sucrose and the sucrose is dissolved in water to form sap okay you know what sap is the sticky stuff that gets in your hands yeah um and um, but unlike xylem vessels these tubes are like cross uh, how do you say it like they contain like cross walls that like intervals um these cross walls usually pref um oh, perforate pref you know like when they come in perforated P E R S O R A T E D. I promise I can speak English. Um, <laughs> but I have many pores which allow the sap to flow, like because they're perforated by these cross walls. Um, so the cross walls are called sieve plates, and the tubes called sieve tubes. So cross walls called sieve plates, and the tubes sieve tubes. Yeah. And the sieve tubes have really really thin walls and are usually like five or six sided. So yeah, they're quite um. Yeah, so they're good. So and but so those are the sieve tubes. And but the memory of companion cells is little friends. Um the companion cells are in between the um in between the sieve tubes. And these have like a really large nucleus and dense cytoplasm. So if you can remember which, just think of like they're the opposite. It's like the sieve tubes are like the tall, weird criminal. I don't know why the criminals I'm speaking of them, like the tall, like weird, really odd, mean person. Like that got no brain. Laurel and Hardy. Sieve tubes, tall, they're they're sort of like made to carry loads of stuff. Laurel makes um Hardy makes Laurel carry loads of stuff. And message. Um and I'm really popular. Um three messages. Two from my mum. Anyway, so like Laurel is the tall one, tall foot one, and then Hardy is like the little short, he thinks he's the brains, he's got all the nucleus and all the cytoplasm. And he's got the side, and um, so he's shorter, and short, way shorter, and fatter and stuff. And these are the companion cells, um, and they have like loads of mitochondria to produce the ATP needed for the active processes that go on. 
and the com um, companion cells carry out all the metabolic processes needed f um, by the sift tube elements. Um, these include using ATP as a source of energy um, to load sucrose into the sift tubes. Um, yeah, okay, I think I know this isn't my book. I really don't want to get this bit wrong, but um, ATP is used as, is used to load sucrose into the sieve tube because the uh, what is it? The ATP allows the H plus ions they go out of the cell, um, which sets up like a diffusion gradient, and then that allow and then when the H plus ions come back into the cell, the hydrogen ions, I think that's what happens, and then they allow the sucrose to come back into. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, and the cytoplasm of the companion cells in the sieve tubes are linked by many plasmodesmata, which is like the plasmodesmata. And these are like gaps in the cell walls um, around communication and flow of minerals between the cells. Um, yeah, so that's uh, xylem and phloem. Um, uh, later on, I'll probably be doing, be doing something like water uptake and movement up the cell. So, look out for that video. Um, good luck with your biology AS exam.